reading a story about Senator Harry Reid and his family and their connections and how he is able to help them from his lofty perch in the nation's capital ram through all kinds of interesting legislation which makes them richer and richer. Uh, this guy, you know, when I look at his face, you don't, if you couldn't, if you didn't hear his voice, which is bad enough, just looking at him, it kind of, it's repulsive. He's beginning to look like a caricature, like Feinstein or, or some of the others who, you know, it looks silly. Harry Reid is, from what I'm reading, no pun intended, one of the most corrupt politicians in modern American history. He was put in there to be the sock puppet, which is exactly what he does. Uh, I, I, can't, I worked in Clark County, Nevada for two and a half years. And I know people there, and, and it is one corrupt state. Kind of like Delaware is, but different. Uh, corruption is corruption, but it's, it's a scene. Harry Reid. Is he up in this, this fall? No, he's a class three, not till 2017. Uh. But I, I want to revisit um, Bundy's situation. When I went up to Klamath Falls, Oregon in April of 2001, that's when the federal thugs shut off the water to hundreds of farmers and ranchers because they wanted to protect the sucker fish. When I got there, the government boys had built cages around the um, valves to shut off the water, Mm -hmm. life-giving water. Mm -hmm. And I walked up to these guys at the BLM, and they were standing side by side by side, all of them were armed. And I looked across the canal, and there was a sniper sitting there. And I looked at these BLM, and I, 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 what I saw in their eyes was that they wanted to kill us. That no, they're, the they're, they're absolutely higher. They're killers. No, there's no doubt about it. Their mental and then profile I turned around, is that of a killer. I, I turned around to talk to... There, there were men there, and, and a lot of women, too, but... They were wearing their baseball caps. These uh-huh. are farmers who farm the land. Mm-hmm. They had a 99-year lease with the government for that water. And in April of 2001, they simply shut it off. But here was these men in their, you know, some of them were probably in their 60s. They had their baseball caps with the names of the ships that they served on or that they were Vietnam veterans. Sure. With tears rolling down their mm-hmm. eyes mm-hmm. because their families didn't have any food. I know you remember, but maybe some of the listeners don't. But Americans, God bless them, from across this country, organized oh, they, they, they semis, sent, and they was, sent semi-trucks like, full of food. Like the Berlin feed. airlift. Yes. Uh, yeah, yes. It was wonderful. And there was no coverage by Fox News. No. There was no coverage by CNN or anybody else. But my heart broke for these people. They ran them off the land. Mm-hmm. They caused over three hundred million dollars in economic damage to that entire area for the suckerfish. Twenty years before that, the same feds came in and killed millions of the same fish because there were too many of them. And well, seven years <laughs> later, the federal yeah. courts sided with the people of Klamath Falls, but it was too late. My personal opinion is. That California was in severe drought. The uh, California Agricultural Belt is a two billion dollar a year business, and the tourist industry. And they diverted that water to go down into California to save the agricultural belt and the because we were in Sacramento at the time, and uh, ice cream stores they couldn't even pay the the air conditioning bills and stuff, and all of this water for power. That was when Enron was going on. Remember? Yeah, sure. This was all all planned. And uh, Chuck Baldwin, I think, did probably the best column I've seen um, yet on the Bundy situation. He, he really lays it out here, you know, that that family has uh, been grazing cattle on that land since the 1880s. But in 1993, the federal government reclassified 600,000 acres of that land mm-hmm. that his family had been grazing on forever to protect this alleged uh, endangered the, the tortoise. Tortoise, tortoise. yeah. Tortoise, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's, and on the front page of my website, I also uh, put the link up to Larry Beecraft's website 
because this all goes to federal jurisdiction. And Larry, as you know, has been a, a criminal defense attorney for well over 35 years now. He is one of the, gives the best legal analysis of, in this whole piece. It's so important to understand, you know, what the, the Supreme Court has cited so many times for the state. If the, if the, the states have to agree to give up this land. They can't just take it. Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17 of the Constitution hmm. spells it out. But if we, if we all learn about this, then we can go to our state legislatures and say, you are going to keep these federal spazi off of uh, state land. You can't, they just can't come stomping in here, you know, like the, the uh, Nazis. Because this whole thing with, with Bundy, these people I personally think are lucky to be alive, and I don't believe, first of all, this is a, what you would call a humiliating experience, listening to Mr. Bundy, how they just really basically took tuck tail and ran, couldn't get out of there fast enough, leaving, yeah. of course, behind nothing but damage that they should, you know, be required to, to reimburse the Well, they got the mass for. grave for cattle they were slaughtering. Oh, or, that's you know, I wanted to puke when I was listening to that. Shooting them from helicopters. Uh, it's, yeah, yeah but, they'll find out how many they were, they were killed. Yeah, Separating them from their calves. I mean, come on. The, 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 the powers that be don't take too well to having, you know, a bloody nose in front of the whole world. Well, that's that's been my point. This thing is not over, and I'm I'm afraid they're going to come back there with ten times the force, go right through that house, clean it out, maybe level it, who knows. And all they got to do, when the, when this thing was at its height, four, four days, five days ago, uh, a false flag, okay? They shoot a cop or they shoot a BLM officer in the leg, and all of a sudden what happens? Unbelievable amount of gunfire. Boom, 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 boom. Dozens dead. Just like that. They could have made that happen any time they wanted. They well, could have. We, we need to go back and look at the Randy Weaver, Ruby Ridge situation. You know, the Internet was not um, on every, in everybody's house back then. No. Um, it was in I think I got my first word processor in 94 or whatever, and I didn't get online until, I think, 98. But in any event, if it hadn't been for the people who showed up there, Bo Greitz and a whole bunch of other people, who spotted the helicopter circling over that family's cabin uh -huh. with gas bladders They're getting ready to, to drop a big, yeah, sure, balloon, They were if you getting will, ready to drop a fireball on yeah. top of their cabin. Yep. And if those folks had not been there, it would have happened. Not, I mean... Of course, the end result was Sammy Weaver being shot in the back, one agent um, being killed, and of course, Lon Horucci putting a 308 through Vicki Weaver's head while she was holding their baby. What and a brave the American man. people went back to sleep because he was nothing but a, some kind of white supremacist, even though we know that the uh, magnificent Jerry Spence uh, uh, defended him in court and he was found innocent of the charges. Correct. But that, to me, was a test case, as was Waco. How much of the American oh, you people bet. are going to take? I honestly well, think that uh, the Bundy Ranch was also, perhaps it didn't start out to be a test case or a, a laboratory evaluation, but it, it certainly was milked for every opportunity that the feds could get to study and watch how the, uh, the people reacted. They listened to all their phone calls. They got pictures of all their faces. They did it all. Uh, there's a lot of technology there that uh, that most people don't know about. Well, so. I can guarantee you that had they been successful in dropping that gas bladder on that cabin and burning that family to death, what we would have heard would have been something to the effect that, oh, if they decided to commit suicide or so of something where where the, the, yeah. the Weaver family was responsible for frying themselves. It's uh. What it, was the fellow's a, name that was uh? Tortured, mutilated, and killed. Gordon Call. Yeah. Remember that was him? Another bad one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, these are these are all in a way test cases. They own the media, so they don't have to worry too much. Uh, as I said, you, one of the most well-informed people I know, hadn't heard about the WIPP no. catastrophe in uh, New Mexico. Uh, well, one it's thing, I, one not thing talked I talked about. Yeah. I one thing I do know. 
and I, I have it here, and I've mentioned it in a column in the past, is the, the book called Homegrown Terrorists that was the Southern Poverty Law Center's baby. Oh, and they yeah. started back in the mid-90s, just after uh, Ruby Ridge and Waco, getting it to law enforcement. And yep. that's really when it started with uh, brainwashing law enforcement into believing that we're the enemy, that no matter how bad a law is, no matter how con- unconstitutional, anything, uh-huh. we are the enemy. Yep. And that mindset is now all over the place, especially with the Fed. And it, 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 we, like I said, the, the militia, it is absolutely us between us and them. It is the most peaceful way, peaceful, to take back how do we get? How do we get, beside Edwin and you uh, and your columns and this program a little bit? Where's do we get the this NRA? Thing, how, yeah, how do we get this planted? We're getting the no, NRA support, has, no support the NRA whatsoever. has known about Edwin's work for years. I believe the NRA is uh, duplicitous uh, and not uh, but as But you it see, seems. it's their members. We dropped out. We canceled our membership in the NRA after I found out all about this militia stuff. I said, that's it. If you, You're in it for the money. All you do is wine and dine yourself with a bunch of uh, members of the Congress. And they you do. negotiate no, away not. the Second Amendment. You don't, su- the NRA, you do not support the Second Amendment because the, what does the Second Amendment say? A well-regulated militia. It is the meat and the teeth of the Second Amendment. So you want to run around NRA and have lunch with, you know, Representative so-and-so. And in the meantime, in the meantime, all, the right to own and bear arms. It has everything to do with the well-regulated militia. And like I said, absolutely, I believe in 1,000% that the only thing the powers that be are afraid of is enough states reconstituting the militia. Because look what happened with Bundy and the private militias. There wasn't 10,000 of them. There was a few hundred. So imagine, they can imagine 10,000 when the militia is called up from uh, surrounding uh, counties when something like this happens. They go away. But next time, they may not go away. Well, the controlled media said there were about 1,000 people there, but everybody I've talked to said 2,500. So mm-hmm. it's typical. But well, uh, you're, you're right that uh, SPLC, the, the tribe and their uh, activities to bring this country down, that's where it started. Mm-hmm. Then they started to take the police chiefs on junkets, to, excuse me, training trips to Israel, where they were trained by the IDF in how to handle people. And so many American police chiefs are Israeli trained. Well, and one one other thing I wanted to bring up, because I know we're running out of time, I think you've uh, followed this also, was an eminent domain case out in Colorado, in Breckenridge. Beautiful place in Colorado, Mm -hmm. up there in the Rockies. This couple, you know, they bought their dream, a piece of heaven out there. And... They, they own 10 acres of land at 11,000 feet in Breckenridge. Uh-huh. With, I mean, I can just imagine the breathtaking views that they have. But it's a private patch of land that was surrounded by the White River National Forest. Right. Well, they didn't want to sell the land. Okay? So the, the local government simply condemned their property. The cabin was condemned on the grounds of plumbing and electricity when it doesn't even have plumbing or electricity. <laughs> So, once again, mm. here you have these local officials. Somebody wants that land for something else. Oh, sure. There is a shuttered gold mine on the land. Well, there you go. The only thing that was on it is an old, uninhabited, day-use cabin with no electricity, mm-hmm. no uh, water or anything, an outhouse, and a shuttered gold mine. And they put these people through hell, and they finally threw in... Uh, they threw in the towel and said that you can't fight the government, you'll lose. That's what they said in their interview. You can't fight the government. They gave up. 